Hey everyone, Dennis here with a quick note before we get started. Towards the end of this episode, Sam and I talk about some possible episodes we may do over the winter break. After we finished recording, Dean Georgeris, one of the executive producers, reached out to us and offered to come on as a guest during the break to sort of recap the first season with us. We don't know the details just yet, but we're going to be really excited to bring you that episode. Stay tuned, and we'll let you know on our social media as we know more. All right. Hello, everybody. Hello. Welcome to Fate's Wide Wheel Quantum Leap Podcast. I'm Sam. I'm Dennis. And this week, we've got Stand By Ben. I'm really looking forward to talking about this. I mentioned this just briefly off mic. Uh, yes. I feel like you and I have some similar feelings about the episode, but for different reasons, which I think mm-hmm. could make for, uh, I hope, an interesting conversation. This is going to be an interesting conversation. And I'm looking back and uh, I'm also looking forward to going back and kind of touching a little bit on Oh Ye Little Faith because there are some hmm. thoughts and I mean, they even showed some flashbacks in this episode. So it'll be interesting yeah. to, to, to go back and touch on that. But before we jump into that, let's thank our patrons. You beautiful people, you. You beautiful, beautiful folks. Thank you so much. Uh, this week, we have Al's Place Leap Fan Site, Bourbon and Board Games. I gave uh, them a shout out last episode, uh, but this is Matt. He found us through TikTok. We've actually done a couple of videos back and forth, and uh, he, he sent us a donation through buy me a coffee and i missed it for a month because i missed that email month <laughs> notification so sorry matt and i also didn't realize uh, i didn't recognize your bourbon and board games name uh and then you sent me a message and then and then we followed up there so yeah thank you again uh it's been fun going back and forth there uh carolyn cosplay dad joanne bartlett dana bias rich bork kevin and kevin butcher Carol Davis, Dex Lower, Dermot Devlin, Barry Donovan, Brian Dreadful, Troy Evers, Larry Ganey, Jason Geis, Michelle Hoffman, Amy Holtkamp, Bess A. Corey, Lady Eternal, oddly specific with Audra, Christopher Redmond, Adrian Saul, Karen Saxon, Mike Stouffer, Heather Strabayek, Damon Sugamelli, Larry Trujillo, Stuart William, Jill Wilson, our new newest donor, Rob Nunn. Thank you so much, Rob. We went back and forth a little bit on Twitter this last week. And of course, our anonymous donors. And if you would like to become a patron of the show, you can do that a couple of ways. If you want to do it monthly, you can do it through patreon.com slash fateswidewheel. If you want to do it uh, just a one-time donation, you can do it through buymeacoffee slash dot buymeacoffee.com slash fates wide wheel you can find that information in our show notes if you would like to support us but you aren't financially able to do so a great way you can do that is to make sure you follow us on apple Podcasts and give us a review there and if you don't feel like writing anything out just give us a star rating that's very helpful we got a couple of reviews come in this week thank you so much we really appreciate that that helps people find us we always appreciate absolutely it. we do we do and uh you know as i will always say i'm just kind of bowled over um by the support and it's really amazing to me we're grateful for it and i really appreciate you and if you're interested in supporting us then certainly i hope that you are doing your best to support a local charity or something that's close to your heart and if after all that of course you still got some coins rubbing together and you want to throw them our way again thank you thank you thank you um and even if you're not doing that uh we're just glad you're here we're glad that you are here we're glad that you're a part of this community and we're glad that you are sharing this experience because it has been so much fun. You know, these past eight weeks have mm-hmm. kind of flown by. Um, and and so much, I feel like, of, you know, a good portion of, of our weeks uh, in between episodes is, is, is kind of just doing that work, having those conversations. It's not work. I mean, it's fun. You know, having these conversations sure. with people on Twitter mm-hmm. and having you know, conversations with people on Facebook, Discord, even Reddit. Um, I haven't been as active on Reddit. Reddit, oddly enough, took a weird turn the past couple of weeks, and, and it feels like it's a little bit more acidic than it was there at first. And I mean, oh, there's no. still plenty of, uh, you know, nice conversations taking place too, but I feel like all of a sudden, you know, there's, there's been a little bit more weirdness. Uh, but that said, uh, uh, always, always happy to uh, engage and, and have great conversations. And Twitter has been a lot of fun. We're trying <laughs> I've, I've been horrible at it as soon as uh, Audra, you know, f- throughout the suggestion about like signing the the tweets with emojis. I was like, that's a great idea. I'll totally mm-hmm. do that. And, uh, and, and, and now I feel like I've missed doing it on half the tweets I've done the past few days. Sure. But, um, that's a great but, suggestion. You know, I, I did it on yeah. one. Yeah. Um, right. <laughs> I, I, I feel like if, if it's where, where we're expressing opinion that we think may be unique to us individually. Right. Sure. Sure. I'll sign it then. Sure. I'm going to try to be more, be more uh, aware of that and find a better emoji than the one that I 
that I have. Now. Yeah. Are. I mean, you know, the truth of the matter is that like, even if it's something that we're not necessarily in complete agreement on, I, I feel like we're, we're both out there representing the podcast and that's what the Twitter feed is for. And so sure. I appreciate that people like to know which of us is talking. And I like that too. Uh, you know, it's fun to be able to, to, to be like, Oh, it's Sam and or it's Dennis. And um, so I totally get that. And, and we'll, we'll try just no promises. Sure. Um, we are, but, uh, but two tired dads. Yeah. Yeah. Especially today. Today was my son's first birthday party. His first birthday was actually a couple weeks ago, but today was the party and um, it was fun. It ended up being uh, more work. It's funny. I felt like it was more work than Hattie's, but it also might be the fact sure. that, you know, I have another child in the house now. So there's, 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 there's more to do. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, we really appreciate you all. And again, just to reiterate, you know, we're, we're really glad that you're here and we're really glad that everybody's enjoying the show, uh, that is enjoying the show, um, and, and having the conversations that we're getting to have, because it's been a lot of fun seeing, you know, not even necessarily like all the, the theories and, and stuff about what could happen or what may happen, which is great, but even just the in-depth conversations about specific moments within the episodes or callbacks to the original series, mm. or, you know, even dissecting little moments of the original series that might not have anything to do with what's currently going on because, sure. you know, let's face it, we love the original series too. I mean, that's, that's what we mm -hmm. did for, for five years until yeah, all sure. of a sudden we got the chance to do something else. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So uh, we're, we're grateful and appreciate that and uh, looking forward to what's next. Uh, I think that uh, we we're going to have an interesting couple of weeks, well, a couple of weeks, couple months um, sure. post standby Ben, because we uh, are entering the, the fall break, the holiday break. And uh, we don't know exactly when new episodes are coming back. I, somebody quoted us recently as saying that new episodes are coming back January 9th. Um, we did not say that. I think, we might have said that that would probably be the earliest that we would guess but but we would that was not a confirmation um mm -hmm. by any stretch um i think the, i said eight uh, weeks on tiktok so someone may have ah uh, sure out from that so yeah right 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 um but it could I, i'm assuming that it will be you know late january early february could be earlier than that we'll see um but that's just kind of what my guess would be as soon as we know we'll certainly you know let you guys know um and if you know before we do let us know uh, <laughs> yes <laughs> that's why i like you know speaking of twitter uh that we i feel like we tend to follow back more of our followers than a lot of podcast accounts do sure but I, but I like doing that because a, a lot of the stuff we find out from other people tweeting about quantum leap. So if I, you know, if you follow us and I check out your profile and I see that you've been tweeting a lot about quantum leap, more likely than not, I'm going to follow you because you may end us, you may end up telling us something that we don't know. Yeah. I, which is entirely not out of the realm of possibility on really? a day-to-day -day basis. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that, yeah. Uh, for Quantum Leap and many, many other things. Yeah. So, uh, Before we move on to the non-spoiler review, I do want to give a quick shout out to Nick McLean. Uh, sent us a really great email. I really appreciate uh, your thoughts. Um, we're not going to go, you know, deep into it, but uh, I will say uh, that I really enjoyed uh, the comment. Uh, I know it's just a TV show, but at its best, like Star Trek, it represents a way of looking at the world and an acknowledgement that we can be better if we're only willing to listen to each other and work together. I thought that was a really great sentiment. And it's so funny that you dropped the Star Trek thing. I mean, obviously we, you know, have dropped plenty of Star Trek references on the podcast. Sure. Um, but Star Trek has been really like uh, in, in my mind lately and I'm not watching it. I'm not like, you know, engaging with that part of the fandom. Mm -hmm. It's just been something I've been thinking about. And I think part of the reason why is as we kind of have entered this new era, you know, we're basically getting, uh, you know, the quantum leap version of next generation, right? You know, in mm -hmm. a way. And 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 it's just interesting to think about some of the parallels uh, that exist that you can't help but make because, you know, in a lot of ways, Star Trek did it first, right? You know, I mean, in, in, when it comes to just about any kind of television, sci-fi fandom or anything, you know, before before there was really anything, there was there was Star Trek in a lot of ways. Mm. Um so I appreciated that reference as well. And I completely agree with the sentiment. Uh, I think that that's one of the great things about any piece of, of art. And uh, this definitely is that, uh, is that it, it helps to shine a light in some dark places and, and make us think about things from a different perspective when it's truly great and, and give us those perspectives. And I think that we are very fortunate that, you know, this iteration of Quantum Leap has had the opportunity already to do that. And I firmly believe that when they come back from the break, there are a couple of episodes in the pipeline that will absolutely continue that push that even more to the forefront and and, and perhaps be um 
maybe what some people are looking for, especially when it comes sure. to that sort of social commentary. Um, not that I don't think they've already done it, but I think some people may be looking for a little bit more overt. Mm -hmm. Sure. That, and, I, and I think that that's, that's on the way. Yeah. Speaking of Star Trek and Twitter, in the last couple of days, have you seen people sharing the meme of when Star Trek Discovery name dropped Elon Musk in an episode? <laughs> and now how it was cringy then, and now it's really cringy now. Yeah. Well, it's <laughs> funny. A... It's funny, too, when you think about it, because, uh, you know, Ian's line that they had about, uh, uh, you know, Elon Musk or Zuckerberg being able to go into the yeah. past and everything. And now here we are, like, you know, Musk actually having bought Twitter and their their comments <laughs> ring just a little bit more. Uh, yeah. yeah 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 anyway but, you know but, but i will just add this in that I, I think that you made a great comment about you know we're not going anywhere as of now i think that mm. twitter still exists as a wonderful platform for some incredible discourse and i understand why some people have decided to leave i completely respect that choice but for us right now we're able to you know cultivated this environment where we're able to have these wonderful conversations with great people and we just want to continue doing that and you know should things get out of hand in any way shape or form or we feel like it's not a safe space uh, at all then yeah we will you know we'll, we will probably find somewhere else if we have to but uh, as of right now i don't think that that's the case i think it's kind of one of those things where you're just sort of like oh, okay fine uh sure. but but the wonderful thing about i think a platform like twitter is it can really genuinely be what you make of it and right mm -hmm. now i i really i honestly feel like we've been able to make you know something pretty cool with it and and that's because of the other people that that are engaging with us so uh thank for you sure again for sure <laughs> yeah yeah uh scroll Binge your quantum leap tweets. Don't be on Twitter this Tuesday during the oh. midterms. <laughs> Don't be doom scrolling. Yeah. During the midterms. I made the mistake of doom scrolling on Twitter on the night of the last presidential election. And I'm gonna, I'm not gonna get in, I'm not gonna get into it, but there was a certain point of like, all right, I, I just need to get off and go to bed. Anyway, yeah. that being said, let's jump into uh standby Ben. I'll let you go yeah. first this time because I feel like I've gone okay. first last week, at least last couple of weeks. Cool. Standby Ben. Um so I thought this was a good episode. I didn't think it was a great episode. I certainly don't think it's a bad episode by any stretch. There's a lot of really wonderful moments um, in, in The Leap. Uh, in particular, I think some of the relationships that develop uh, with the, uh, the kids, you know, the teenagers, uh, and Ben uh, are really lovely. There's some incredibly charming moments. Um, there's some moments that, uh, for me, uh, were, they, they kind of hit that nostalgia button, like in, in that good way, you know, where mm -hmm. it's just sort of like when Stacy brings up um, the Spice girls and wannabe and compares mm -hmm. it to bohemian rhapsody i was just sort of like mm -hmm. i was like oh man uh and yep. um you know and, and then uh i i felt like the there were there, there there were just some really wonderful moments towards the the resolution um and while i think maybe things it feels like things get tied up a little bit too neatly um, at the end. Uh, one of the comments that I made last week with OE of Little Faith is I felt like the, you know, when uh, the father and daughter came together, it was it was a really wonderful, touching, moving moment, but it didn't feel like they were done. You know, it felt like there's sure. still work to do here in this relationship. And I felt like with the way that things got left at the end of the episode, I, it, that door didn't feel as open to me. Now, I think that that is one of the problems that the original series had, too. And, and I think it's part of the conceit of the show in general, right? Like, sure. the whole mission is to make these people's lives better. So if we hear their lives are better, then it might just feel like everything's all tied up in a neat little bow. And the truth be told... You know, it's our job as the audience to, you know, to imagine the fact that like, it's probably a hard road for Roy from, you know, the middle of desert in this school to Boston where he ends up. So I'm kind of going to spoiler things here, but like, you know, running this group home and everything. And, 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 and I think when you, when you take a moment to really think about it and let it sit with you for a while, you do start to get that feeling of like, oh yeah, there's probably a lot more going on than meets the eye. But upon my initial watch, I did get that vibe that maybe things were tied up a little too neatly. Um, but I still, like I said, I still really enjoyed uh, the Leap story a great deal. Uh, the project stuff, uh, I, I felt like, you know, thematically connected very well uh, with the Leap. Um, I feel like I might be in the minority in thinking that uh, based off of some of the stuff that I've kind of seen um from mm -hmm. from other podcasts or whatever but I'm, I'm fine with that uh plot wise there's not a huge connection obviously uh but i thought that there was some great moments and again i think that jen uh it just continues to have some really wonderful stuff like thrown her way and and then is, is knocking out of the park uh 
I had a little, like some of the dialogue that was given to Ian in particular and some of the scenes with Ian felt a little off to me for some reason. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that could just be the circumstances under which they found themselves because it was a tense situation. But for some reason, I don't know, it it didn't quite feel like, um, and I hate to say this because I said something a couple of weeks ago about like out of character and what does that really mean? But it Mm -hmm. did almost feel a little out of character um, compared to some of the other things uh, that that we've seen from them. Uh, Yeah. Uh, Overall, there there was a somewhat uneven quality to the whole episode. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the strange comment that that I would uh, probably make is that parts of it felt maybe a little underwhelming, but not disappointing, if that makes sense. And Mm -hmm. I think the reason why I make that distinction is because it's easy to be underwhelmed if your expectations are in a place that might not necessarily be realistic. Mm -hmm. But once you start to think about it, you can't be disappointed because again, I felt like what we got was still good. So Mm -hmm. it's, it it, it was a strange episode for me, I think in those terms. And I think when we get into a little bit more in depth about it, maybe I'll be able to kind of explain that perhaps a little bit better. Um, But that's my long, short way of saying that. (laughs) Say that. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, and we were texting back and forth. I was underwhelmed by the episode too, but again, it's about expectations. First off, we came off of last week's episode, which I think like sitting with it for a week, I think the Halloween episode has been my favorite episode so far. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was texting back and forth with a buddy of mine who ch- were childhood friends. He was only ever a casual fan of the OG and he is loving this new nice series and so he he really liked the halloween episode and he, it's his favorite so far so we were talking about that so it's it, it's stacked up against that and you know the couple of strong episodes that have come before it i think given what i was pulling away from the promotional photos and some things that we have uh, heard about the episode otherwise i was expecting less project time I knew mm-hmm. we were going to get a little bit of it because from the promotional photos, we saw Jen and Magic stuck in an elevator together. So right, I knew that we were right. going to get something. But I was um, I was expecting something different. And upon second viewing, because I did get a chance to watch it twice, one like late last night when the screener came in, and then uh, earlier this afternoon, uh, it fared better in a second viewing. The project story, I did not mind. I, 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 I always love the project stuff. I know some people have trouble with with the project stuff right i always like when they when they go there you know mm-hmm. someone who when i watched the original series i loved whenever they went to the original project and i i love i love that that's a part of it what didn't work for me is one they were like the stories were very at odds like there was some like thematic stuff that that went along but what bugged me the most is the fact that the leap story seemed to take place over the course of about 36 hours and the project mm-hmm. stories over the course of three to four hours and as they were and maybe i'm wrong maybe maybe we'll we'll hash this out and it turns out that i'm wrong and those two things just did not line up with one another and i think that's what i found really jarring is is trying to figure that out and i'll explain that more yeah And I'll explain that more as we get into it. And uh, that's a great thing. Yeah. And the other thing I'm going to say, I'm I'm not going to get into it now. I was going to say now, but I'm not going to get into it now because I don't know how to say it without getting really spoilery. So I'll save it for later. But overall, uh, like I said, upon second viewing, I, I enjoyed it a lot more. I really, I liked the, uh, I like the guest cast outside of the main cast. I like the fact that we focus mostly on teenagers. I don't think yeah. we've seen an episode that focused mostly on teenagers, like from the teenagers perspective, like not through the lens of adults, right? with the exception of another mother from the yeah. OG series. And which so, was obviously a very different kind of different, focus yes. on teenagers. Because if that episode, the teenagers end up feeling with the exception of the son, obviously end up feeling very broad very much caricatures you know Mm -hmm. um and and this this episode 
is definitely not that. <laughs> yeah. So I really loved the like the quieter character moments, like sitting around the campfire on the first night in the cabin, the second night, like the little like one on ones that Ben had. Really liked uh, the conversation between Ben and Roy and Addison yes. kind of going along. And like I said, that was one of those yeah. moments of like Addison's line. I won't say it till we get to the spoilery part, but it was just like subtle commentary on on like the like like the whole system that trapped these wonderfully empathetic in the right setting intelligent kids yeah what trapped them into the setting yeah and i'll get more into that uh that's 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 a, a, another lovely point um all right, so let's 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 go ahead and should we dive on into our spoilers sure. now? Let's dive on in. Yeah. All right. So first of all, um, unfortunately, I am I'm going to try very hard, but uh, I, I I my apologies ahead of time to the director's name. Uh, this episode was written by Emily Kim. Uh, director is Avi Yobin. Uh, I hope I'm saying that right. He's an Iranian-born uh, director, uh, raised in Los Angeles, um, and has has worked on uh, a number of other television pro- uh, projects. I couldn't find a whole lot on Emily. Um, I know that this episode is is certainly the the, the product to get. I mean, I, and I think that this is true of of a lot of the episodes uh, thus far. But it's definitely a product of you know collaboration. There's a lot of collaboration that goes on uh, throughout the course of of the crafting of these episodes. Um, not necessarily every episode, uh, but certainly there are you know there are other voices in the room there are other you know contributors beyond just the name that's that's on that screen um but uh, unfortunately i couldn't necessarily find a lot about emily so i'm not sure exactly what else uh they've worked on um but uh that's that's what we have for that um we get something in this episode that we've not gotten uh since atlantis the second episode of the series which is a year on the screen, mm-hmm. 1996, which we knew uh, ahead of time because that was in the the trailer uh for the episode um and Ben is left into Benjamin Winters, who's 16 years old and uh, has has fallen into a situation here. Um, <laughs> That's he's a, great, uh, he's, great he's a, a kleptomaniac uh, who apparently is somewhere on the spectrum, uh, perhaps uh, undiagnosed uh, Asperger's. Um, I mean, I think that Addison pretty much comes right out and says that he has Asperger's, but I think, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, that kind of sets the stage. The kids, uh, of course, uh, we've got uh, Leah, Roy, and Stacy um, all hop into an SUV and escape. Uh, ben, of course, is like, we've, we've escaped from school you know kind of kind of quizzical about this Mm -hmm. uh and they are they're off they they've they've you know made their prison break and now they all have plans um it's to vegas yeah yeah roy's going to alaska wants to get Mm -hmm. lost in the wilderness yeah and leah this is the see, and this is one of the interesting dynamics that gets put forth early on when it comes to uh, our, our supporting our, our guest cast, rather, uh, is that Leah wants to go back home. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Stacy almost immediately is like, you know, there's nothing there for you. You can't go back home. You can't, you, you know, they don't want you there. Uh, and Ben, he's kind of like, hey, you know, don't. Sure. Don't say that. And I really appreciate that protective quality of Ben, um, you know, almost immediately, just not because it might not necessarily be the case, but because no one should have to hear that, right? Yeah. No one should have to, especially when you're 16 years old. It's one thing if you're 35 years old and in therapy and you come to the res- you know, the, the realization that like you were unwanted in some fashion or whatever. It's another thing sure. when you're 16 years old and you're in the and moment. That. And it's like, sure. yeah, I mean, so um, I really appreciated that. And, and the funny thing is, is that one of the things I'll just say right off the bat, Ben's relationship with the other teenagers, it never becomes parental. It borders on it a couple of times. Mm-hmm. But he really works very hard to meet them at their level. And I loved that. I loved that mm-hmm. element of, of you know, Ben. Um, sure. um, and uh, and I think, you know, Raymond obviously is is, is great at, at, mm-hmm. at, you know, really kind of behaving in a manner that makes that, us yeah. think, yeah, that, that, that he really wants to connect with them on their level as opposed to trying to be some sort of parental figure. Sure. He's very empathetic and charismatic for a socially awkward quantum mm-hmm. physicist. <laughs> which we talked about that was that was sam's issue that's a little you know little issue with the uh, right in the og series i love having the date on the screen i realized like seeing it again for the first time since atlantis 
uh, especially with now leaps that are going to be taking place within our lifetime, with our own lifetime, which is not the case for the OG. Like it really helps plant into my head, like where I was and what I was doing yeah. during that time. And that really kind of like helps me get more into the story. So I'm just like, I, I wish they would start doing that more on a regular basis for whatever reason they have not been doing that. I'm, you know, I, I'm of two minds. One, I, I cannot disagree with anything that you just said. But two, there's something very, the way that it engages a viewer to put the pieces together on their own, as opposed to having somebody kind of just feed it to them and give them that. I, sure. I enjoy that. It's one of the comments I remember I made about Play It Against Seymour when we when we reviewed Play It Against Seymour the first time is that that's a first season episode that we don't find out the date that Sam has left until after like the information is already presented to us on screen via the newspaper, similar For to sure. Yves Little Faith. And I really do, I, 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 a, some conversation that I have seen taking place and, and it's just, a, and I, I think it's a disagreement um, that is completely valid. And I don't think this is a case where there's a right or a wrong here. Uh, but for me personally, I enjoy the fact when sometimes I'm given just a hint and, and, and that really draws me in even more, engages me even more, gets me to use my imagination, gets me to, uh, you know, be uh, immersed in the work in a way that I feel like sometimes when all the details are handed to you, that, mm. that, that, that just is impossible to have. Um, you know, this this isn't a case of of, of like laziness uh, on the writer's parts or anything like that. It's just a case of like telling you a story with missing pieces of information is to me is always going to be more engaging. Sometimes it's disorienting. Yes, but I actually really love that. So even in the books that I read and so I think that and there's a time and place for both. But mm. for me, I'm OK if it's not always standard. Honestly, I'm okay if it's sure. not always on the screen like it was in, in the original. Hmm. I mean, I could see like some kind of mix. Like sometimes maybe it's a standard, like, you know, like it's just put on the screen. Sometimes it's a newspaper, like at the beginning right. of the thing. Like I said, for me, just like knowing where we are and like just that, like planning it in a year, it just kind of helps me get more into it. Yeah. But like I said, yeah, that's just me. Um, and with the, and with the kids relating to them, it was interesting. Uh, you know, we did not have any like similar like Sierra Youth Academy or whatever it was. Uh, but in my hometown, we had the nearby Baptist Children's Home. So we had kids very much like this, troubled youth that were sent there by their parents for one reason or another. And the thing, you know, like, like great, wonderful kids, but you just kind of knew like they were there for a reason. And um, and especially because like all of these kids also came to the church that I went to because I went to a Baptist church. And it was always interesting being friends with these folks because one day they just wouldn't be there anymore. Mm, mm. They would go home or they would get moved to another school. And there was no goodbye. There was no anything. It was just like one day, oh, Gene's gone. Yeah. It was just interesting. Yeah. I'll get personal here for a second. Sure. Uh, when I was a kid, um, I spent a couple of weeks um, in a in a children's ward, and uh, very similar experience, right? You know, you get there, and it's you know some people you might click with you might connect with and then before you know it you know like they're gone right and then and then new people would come in and uh it it, it was always um it, the thing that was fascinating to me, and now that I think about it, 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 it's very similar, of course, to theater, right? You you meet somebody, you become very close with them, you work with them, perhaps on a very intimate level, not, you know, not physically intimate or whatever, but just on an intimate level, and then shows over and you move on. And sometimes you literally, sometimes you never talk to those people again, you know, yeah. other times, of course, you forge those friendships and you, you keep in touch sure. or whatever, or, or you, you keep in touch, but it's not quite the same. Um, and that's that is kind of a very interesting element, especially when it comes to the relationships between uh, these four kids. And I and I say four, including Ben, in that because, of course, before our Ben leaps into this Ben, um, it, it, you get the impression that they don't necessarily know one another super well. Mm -hmm. I you get the idea that Stacy and Roy know each other mm -hmm. better than sure. like you know, Stacy and Leah or Roy and Leah or, or Ben or, and, and I think that that's a really interesting dynamic, uh, especially for us to begin with, with, um, you know, four, 
for lack of a better word, kind of broken people that mm. are brought together in this situation and they need a way out. Uh, and I think that that's a, just a huge part of, of, of um, this episode in general is kind of looking for that, that way out and the reason for that, that way out. Um, I mean, hell, even back at the project, we literally have Magic and Jen needing a way out of sure. the elevator, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. um, mm -hmm. And that's the other thing too, is it's like, I feel like sometimes, you know, there are, there are criticisms made, complaints made about certain things where I just kind of feel like, man, I don't know that I don't, I, I hate to say this because I don't want to sound judgmental, but it's like, maybe as a, stop being such a passive viewer. You know, there, there's stuff there. There are things there um, for the viewer to follow. And I know some people say like, well, it shouldn't be such hard work. That's great, you know, and, mm -hmm. and maybe and maybe you're right. Maybe this show isn't for you. Um, I mean, I hate to think that, right? I, I'd like to think that we could all be engaged on that level and be willing to kind of do a little bit more of that work from time to time. But um for me, I, I I just love that. I, I love the idea that there are these that there are that there are these connections, um, you know, that there are these deeper things that there's subtext going on, and it just makes for a richer, more layered story, uh, and, and it feels it it just feels more immersive and engaging. Sure, and I guess one of the things like I was expecting more of in this episode. Speaking of that, is I was expecting more of the quieter conversations where we got a chance to, to dig into that. I really loved the campfire scene that I briefly referenced before where Ben is talking to Roy and Addison brings up like, Hey, I see, I, I met a lot of these folks in the military. Like they yeah. came, you know, I can't remember how exactly she put it, but you know, came here uh, with no other place to go and they just need to be listened to and talk about like just, wonderful subtle commentary about the state of the u.s military yeah right and, uh and, and how they and how they recruit and pull people in yeah um and again as you're saying that now all of a sudden i'm thinking about potential parallels with leaper x Oh God! And thinking yeah. about the idea that like this is someone that wants something so badly and thinks that they're going to get it from the military, right? For sure. Yeah. You know, it's it. I I I I just again, it's like mm -hmm. there, there's there's so there there's a lot of stuff at play. And look, I'm 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 not sitting here, you, you, you know, just patting everything on the back. There are absolutely some very valid criticisms to be made, not only of the series, but of individual episodes. I think some of the sure. dialogue in this particular episode in particular, it doesn't work for me all the time. Um, you know, I mentioned like the the Ian stuff earlier, which we'll get to in just a second. But uh, I do think that then there are moments where, it, it, again, the scene with Roy, played by Anthony Turple, um, who I think does mm -hmm. just a, a wonderful job in this episode, um, especially when you look at where... He starts off at the beginning of the episode with where he is at the end of the episode. It's mm -hmm. a really lovely journey. And, and, and I think a lot of that is a testament to the writing. And the fascinating thing is, is you've got an episode like this, right? Where the story, I think the story for the leap is really on point. It's just that sometimes the dialogue, I don't know, matches up with that. And there are things that do feel like maybe we could have gotten a little bit more of. But here's something I was thinking about earlier today. For all the criticism and commentary that gets made that we see about wishing there was more time spent on the leap, as I thought about this episode on a whole, I it felt very traditional in a lot of ways. Like you could transplant the story of this leap into the original series, and I mm -hmm. felt like it would have played. It would have played really well, and it, it you know wouldn't there wouldn't have been a lot of changes required. Some changes for sure. Sure. But here's something that we would have gotten in the original series that we would absolutely you know, never get in this iteration of the series and is an argument for the amount of time spent on the leap. There's no narration, which I don't think is necessary. Like in the original series, there would have probably been, you know, a minute, maybe minute and a half worth, maybe even more of narration by Sam trying to mm -hmm. connect the dots, you know, for the viewers coming back from commercial or, you know, after the opening credits or whatever. Mm -hmm. there's no cringy moments with Al talking about how these 16 year old girls are in the prime of their life or whatever, which we literally got on the original series. Mm -hmm. Yep. Nope. Yep. You know, I, I, yep. Yep. So I'm thinking, so, I'm thinking of the exact episodes. Right. About, yeah. So when <laughs> yeah. you, when you cut out stuff like that, right. Yeah. What are you left with? Yeah. You quantum leaping left... through. Yeah. Quantum leaping through time. Exactly. Is a lot like rolling over in an SUV. Yeah. 
you never know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so I think, and so I think that, that, that it, sometimes it's easy. And plus the truth of the matter is, is that like things move faster these days than, than, you know, than 30 years ago. Um, and I don't want to turn this into a comparison between the two, because obviously we love, we have a deep affinity for that original series, but sure. I, 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 it's, it's hard for me not to try to combat some of, of that criticism because I don't necessarily feel it is as well thought out or as, as valid as, as some think that it might be. Um, especially when there are incredibly in-depth critical conversations that we could be having about these episodes that I don't know are always able to take place in other forums because, you know, I, I think perhaps we're hung up on the wrong things at times. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, moving past that, uh, yeah. I, I, yeah, I really love Anthony Turple in the role of Roy. I love the character of Roy. I love Leah a lot. Um, and uh, mm-hmm. I don't have the actor's name in front of me right now, but I'll get it for you in just a moment as I stall a bit. Uh, her name is Sierra Riley mm-hmm. Wilson. I really loved the the stories and the arcs for both of these characters throughout the course of the episode. And I thought that Leah in particular was just written incredibly well. Um, you know, even, even like her dialogue, like I said, some of the dialogue mm-hmm. didn't feel quite right in places. And some of that could be to the acting and not the writing um the one character i didn't connect with as much is stacy i felt like if 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 um if if there's hesitate to say this but if there's like a weak link in in that chain uh it, it times it felt like stacy there are times when i was completely on board and, and and really enjoyed some of the choices that were being made especially when roy like goes in for a kiss after they've all come together at the uh mm-hmm. at the cabin and she gets up and she leaves i thought that that was a really powerful moment for many reasons and i think it's another thing and I really want to give credit where it's due to the writer's room and the producers and stuff is that sometimes the stuff that gets left unsaid to me is just as effective and just as powerful as any of the stuff that gets said. And I really loved that the viewer, the, it's left up to me to decide exactly why she does that because it's not addressed you know when ben follows her outside Mm -hmm. and they have that little brief conversation it's not about why she didn't kiss roy or you know who hurt you or whatever it's not about that um i mean it it is a little bit they talk about like the law of the death of her mom and the need for control but like it's it's more about it's more about ben seeing her for who she is Mm -hmm. and and acknowledging her um than it is about you know, talking about what just happened, um, you know, might not pass the Bechdel test perfectly, but you know what I mean? It's not about <laughs> sure. a boy. Right. And I appreciated that. Now that said, I don't know that I, I don't know that I really liked Ben's speech to her. It felt very, it, it felt a little too clean, you know, it felt a little mm-hmm. too, scripted <laughs> you know what i mean sure like and uh and i and i don't think that that's raymond's fault um but uh i guess for me that that was the one element of the of the story of the leap story that that didn't work quite as well as like leah mm-hmm. and roy and that was stacy's story um even though again there were some wonderful moments still within and i can't put my finger completely on it you know i don't want to throw that at um Raquel Elena Justice, who plays Stacy. I don't necessarily want to throw that at Emily Kim or anybody. You know what I mean? It's just mm-hmm. something that didn't work, and I don't know how to articulate that as I well gotcha. as you know I could. For sure. For me, what bugged me, not, not bug, it's like what didn't work for me is more in the leap story. Um I don't I, I never actually felt that they were in danger. You know what I mean? Um, and maybe that's just because you only have a limited amount of time to do it in the episode. And you also, you've got to share the time with the project story. Like I thought it was fun. Uh, I thought it was interesting, like them encountering the wolves and, yes. and Leah being the one who comes up, who, who was, who saves the day basically right. like the thing, like to escape it. It's not Addison telling Ben what to do. It's someone else in the group figuring out what to do. Right. Um, I appreciated that. I appreciated Ben's joke afterwards of like, okay, and we're all taking turns sleeping, right? You know, right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> moments, moments of levity, moments of levity after that. Um, but like, like the scene when they were walking through the field the next day and they were out of water and, uh, you know, like that whole sequence, like even leading up to finding the dried out creek and then like going around the corner and finding the cabin. I never really felt like they were significantly in danger even though that's what's supposed to have happened in the original 
timeline. And maybe that's just like a limitation of time. I, I think, you know, one of the reasons that, that, that never bothered me is because I think that obviously like just due to the convention of the series, I, I didn't think there was any chance that any of these characters were going to die. You know what sure. I mean? Uh, and I'm okay with that because it was more about not them. It wasn't about them being in danger so much as it was, is like, how are they going to overcome this obstacle? Sure. Uh, and that was interesting to me. And the other thing that I will say is that of course, in the original timeline, it's clear to me and it, and it was illustrated really well when they run out of water and they start arguing and, you know, and Roy pushes Ben at one point and Stacy, you know, is fed up with everything. It's clear that this group never would have stuck together and that's what killed them, right? They all went off in their own direction without mm. food, without water, trying to find their way out of all this. And that's, and they succumbed, you know, to exposure that way because it's also over hundred degrees outside. So sure. for me, it was more about how do they avoid this and how do they overcome each individual obstacle? And I will say that, that one of the things that was interesting to me and weird to me is that when they find the dried Creek bed and Ben sees the, mm -hmm. the intake, which is also an awesome moment because it ties directly into his, you know, the, his memories, right, sure. which I thought was really wonderful. And I have a little bit of a theory about that, which is probably completely wrong, but uh, that was interesting for me because then of course they find the cabin. There was this part of me that was just sort of like, is there anybody at the cabin? Is there anybody coming back to the cabin? Is there mm -hmm. like, that was when it became like a little bit, because if this was like a horror film, for instance, you know what I mean? Like they would have gotten <laughs> into the cabin, lit all these candles, had their dance party, yeah. you know, ate their crackers and everything. And then the ax murderer shows up. Yeah. Uh, well, so there I mean, was that, an that, element that, of tension to that, but sure. I do agree with what you're saying about them being in danger. For sure. Uh, that's funny. We were watching it last night and when they were like getting to the cabin and like, hey, and Ben was like, hey, should I start the generator? And like, hey, we found this, we found this. And then I was like, and this is where the horror movie portion starts. You're right. <laughs> and when, uh, when Ringer and the other guy's name show up, when the van pulls up, uh, Betsy's initial reaction, like, oh, of course, like somebody lives here. Who did you think it was? Right. Before, before we realized it was the people who, who ran the camp. So yeah i i, mm -hmm. I get your shit i do yeah. get what you're saying there um, uh sullivan by the way it's sullivan and ringer sullivan, sullivan is sullivan. The, the bald one ringer is the one with the beard sullivan's hat yeah. roy is is wearing proudly they, they probably yeah. yes um but yeah like um watching with betsy last night and i always value her opinion because she is at best a casual fan of it so she is a little bit more disconnected and she's a little bit more objective um and the comment that she made, especially in the in the heat exhaustion scene where they were like walking across right before Leah uh, broke her ankle, is that like they they all looked a little bit too pretty for being on the verge of heat exhaustion. Well, that's fair. And again, they, and again, and I said, this is network TV. Network TV looks different than say you're watching prestige TV, right? And also with yeah. prestige TV, you have episodes that actually last an hour without commercials. So you have more time for more details. Right. And you're, and, and, and you're, you know, in this instance, for example, and it, it has to be considered, you're getting like what, seven to 10 days at most to shoot this episode. Mm. You're on the Disney ranch, you know, uh, up in the Hills and, and you're, and you, you know, you're shooting all of these scenes and you know, then as, as, as producers and editors are delivered with all this footage, right. Then they have to f figure out like, you know, what's usable, what's not usable where, you know, where's our coverage, where's yeah. this and, and, and putting together and crafting those episodes from what you're given. It's like, sometimes there's not enough. Sometimes they shot the wrong stuff. Now I'm not saying that's what happened in this episode, but I'm just For saying sure. that these are the types of considerations sometimes that need to be made. And, you know, it's one thing to go in and say like, you know, I'm going to have a critical eye. I'm going to, you know, judge this as I would judge any piece of media or whatever fine but i do think that yeah some considerations have to be given for you know what you're able to do and it's the same thing with like oh you have a little faith they shot that on seven days in you know a house mm -hmm. and you know they don't have a huge budget um i've heard it through the grapevine that so much money was spent on the original pilot that they are operating at less than the normal amount of money that they would have to shoot each individual oh, episode at this point, because, you know, in, in a lot of ways, they kind of, they, so much was just so many resources sure. were kind of pooled on that, on that original pilot episode. So they're kind of still trying to figure out a way to recoup to, some of that, you know, if you will. That's interesting. It, it's interesting. We'd say like, you know, they get the footage and they get in the editing because you said, and I don't remember where, where we got this information, but like salvation or bust, like they weren't exactly sure how they were going to assemble the, the episode because they weren't sure like what footage 
they wanted to use and what not to use. Yeah. Um, and in this particular case, like I said, my issue with the project story in this episode is it, it timing wise, it doesn't seem to mesh well with with the leap story. Because like I said, Addison is pretty much with Ben from like she she goes back and forth. Like she leaves a couple of times, but then she comes back. But then she is pretty much with him from nightfall to that discussion around the campfire through the wolves coming up, staying through the night. And they don't show her come out of the imaging chamber. It's implied that she's with him through the night and then all the next day until they go up to the cabin. Right. Now, outside of the project, they track Janice. They're going to go get her. Everything locks down because Janice was some able, you know, being in the system, she was able to trigger the lockdown protocol Jen and Magic are stuck in the elevator. Ian makes a comment about the engineering team, like they are locked in their offices. At one point during the campfire scene, I thought that they weren't saying it outright, but I thought that Addison was still there uh, was, yeah. because, was because she was stuck in the imaging chamber because everybody was locked down wherever they were. But I at least the same thing. But at least the hologram interface was still working. And I thought, what a great juxtaposition that is from the last episode of being yeah. totally pulled away from ben and now she can't leave the imaging chamber uh kind of like al couldn't leave the imaging chamber in the curse of tahotep right i you know i i thought the same thing and it, it and it, it it admittedly it kind of went away quickly because it's like okay that they're not doing that because mm -hmm. it's made it's, it's made clear you know well, shortly at, after at, at one point ian asked addison to come out to help get jen and magic yeah. out of the elevator yeah so it's like clear it's like okay she can come out but mm -hmm. uh but no i i do agree with that and one of the things though that i, I still think it is a nice juxtaposition and i think works really really well is that addison chooses to stay with ben you know the way that she does after not having been able to be with him in the last episode there's this there's really some wonderful dialogue at the beginning of the episode yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. even ben tries to like hold her hands you know and, and his, his hands obviously go through hers uh yeah. a couple of things worth mentioning of course that not only do we get the the flash of the year on the screen we hear addison enter the scene before we see her you know i through... i love i don't know if they're adding more sound effects or if i'm just noticing them more now i i feel like i feel like the answer is yes to both <laughs> okay. you know perhaps yeah. i mm -hmm. also i also noticed a couple of other things the way that she's using the hand link um it's that seems to be evolving a little bit which again you know that was true of the original series as well so oh, yeah. it's like sometimes when, when people make some of these complaints about like consistency or blah 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 or whatever thing it's, it's just like did you did, did you pay attention in, mm -hmm. in, in sixth grade but anyway uh i i love the fact that you know it seems to be like the the 3d kind of holographic display seems to be something that they're leaning into a little bit more it was very brief but there were a couple of times where she was clearly doing like this while holding it in her hand so it wasn't just like you know down like this which i thought was really cool yeah the um, thing i can, the thing i can't figure out is like sometimes you see the holographic image pop up and sometimes you don't yeah is, I agree. is there is, is there a creative thought behind it or is it literally what they get to with special effects right that's a really <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's an incredibly valid question and it's worth noting we get this episode on a friday night at 10 o'clock at night right mm -hmm. well who's to say that what we're getting at friday at 10 o'clock might not be a little bit different from what airs at monday and that and that could indeed be the case now that hasn't been the case since generally the since the right since the premiere episode but you do have to it's it's worth noting so mm -hmm. so we could be proven wrong like we could end up seeing a little bit more of that on monday mm -hmm. you never know um but i i also think that you know you kind of get an easy out with that as well right like maybe it's the angle you know you could only see it from certain angles or sure. whatever you know there's yeah. all sorts of things that you could you know that, that that again the viewer can can use to 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 kind of just easily explain that away if if that's even necessary which i don't know that it is um but I loved the fact that Addison stays with Ben as long as she does. I loved seeing her laying down, you know, at the at the campsite. Oh, sure. um, I, I, you know, the the idea that they are that they are feeling feeling closer um, mm -hmm. than than they really ever have. Um, and, and I think that OE of Little Faith did a wonderful job of helping to facilitate that with you know, mm -hmm. Ben's kind of hallucination, uh, as well as the fact that they were kept apart for so long. And now here they are back together. Um, and so I really enjoyed seeing that uh, a great deal. Um, no, so yeah, it, it doesn't bug me at all how much time she was there. What I kept getting tripped off on, like I said, 
we're 36 hours on the leap story. The project story was maybe three or four hours. And they I felt never, like it was longer than that, but I but I do I do feel they, like they didn't, yeah. Yeah, because there was one point where I thought, okay, this has been going on for several hours because Addison has been in the imaging chamber for several hours. And then they come back to Ian and they are running around as frantically as they were when the situation started. And I was like, right. like, have they been going around this frantic with with the light show that is I mean. It kind of bugged me a little bit, but that's a conceit like that, like they do in Star Trek all the time. Like when emergency is happening, they're going to flash the lights and, and I know it's for show, it's theatrical, but in reality, it was just like, I, I can't even think with all these lights flashing, what the hell is going on? Right, but right, right. There was that still that- No wonder that, Ian that, is having a problem getting this I know, back right? online. <laughs> um, there was just this frantic motion to it. I was like, oh, like, I, I don't feel like this is happening as long as, as the leap story. Yeah. And the thing is, like, I don't, I don't know how you could fix that other than really condense the project story into one part of the episode, and then that that would totally not work for other reasons. Uh, right. So, like I was... said, not not perfect, but we have a case here where maybe like the leap story and the project story just didn't line up exactly, and so uh, it's and a, you have so it... much ground you got to cover before you get to the fall break, too. Right. One sure. more thing before we move on. Speaking of displays and everything, I don't know if this is intentional or not, but my second viewing, I paused it because there was a brief close-up on Ian's iPad. Yeah. The colors on the display were kind of a very muted reconfiguration of the gummy hand link. Nice. I don't know if I was reading into that, but like the the, the colors were kind of like a muted version of what's on the hand link yeah i mean like i can't imagine that, that that would be anything but intentional right like it wouldn't be i mean maybe it's a happy accident but i would doubt it yeah um yeah I, you, that's I, again that's a really great catch and it's something that i did not think enough about frankly uh um but but now that you've mentioned it uh i, I think that you're absolutely right one of the things that's interesting too about the way that you, you would have to put together an episode like this or a series like this episode by episode is that the convention states that there has to be some sort of balance right between the two not that they have to be even mm -hmm. you know chunks of time by any stretch but that there has to be a balance so that if I've got like my A and my B story here, I'm going to spend, you know, five minutes on the B story. Okay, now we're going to go or on the A story. Now we're going to go two minutes on, on the B story. And, and it just kind of proceeds at that order. Mm. My question is, and I don't know the answer to this, is what says that with a story like this, an episode like this, uh, and I'd have to go back and actually time it out because maybe they did do this in some ways. But what's to say that you couldn't spend, you know, 20 minutes on the leap? And then show us what's happening at the project and basically fix everything that you just said, as opposed to having to try to run them concurrently for like your narrative structures say, sure. like, why not instead just lean into the, you know, the, the, the aspect of the chronology of this in a show about, mm -hmm. you know, not, it's not a show about time travel, but it's a show about time travel, sure. lean into the chronology of this. And, and again, have that stuff at the project take place in a way that feels like it could match up timeline wise, you know, with what we're seeing in the leap. That said, not a deal breaker by any stretch, in my opinion. Sure. One of the things that's interesting about what's happening at the project during this time is that obviously they're trying, you know, to close in on Janice. They're trying to get Janice because, you know, now they know that Janice has talked to Ben mm -hmm. because Ben tells Addison early on, you know, Janice Calavici was there. Mm -hmm. um, and so speak, I, I, I pause here and yeah. interject here real quick. I know there was some confusion. There's some back and forth on Twitter and, and we, we texted back and forth a little bit. In the Halloween episode last week, the first time that the demon appeared, that was supposed to be Janice mm -hmm. trying to break through. I did not catch that. Like me and, and my friend John, like we were texting back and forth. Like, no, we thought they were just like unequivocally, they're going supernatural. This is a demon. Uh, and then when we were watching the episode last night, when they showed that flashback at the beginning of the demon coming in, I paused it and I asked Betsy and I'm like, this is what it was supposed to be. Did you catch that was supposed to be Janice? She was like, oh, yeah. And she was like, yeah, because he had already taken some Jimson weed. And I'm like, no, he hadn't taken any Jimson weed yet. And there's, there's a little hang up there because he was not because she thought it was a combination of Janice trying to break through plus him hallucinating. Yeah. But 
um yeah she she totally bought that 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 was supposed to have been janice breaking through yeah so did i all right i did I, not no, I know, I know, and there are others, and there are others that did not as well. Yeah, yeah. Mm. and I think that, and again, I think that that's one of those things where you have to kind of take into consideration a couple of things. Again, for me, it was it was a complete non-issue, right? Mm. Like at the time I was watching the episode and I saw that happen, agreed, thought, oh, they're leaning into the supernatural. By the end of the episode and seeing the way that Janice appears and kind of coming out of the black smoke in that way, it was like, oh, it was Janice the whole time. Now admittedly i kind of had an ace up my sleeve because i knew before i watched the episode that janice was going to appear at the end like we knew that oh yeah i mean i mean I we've mean, known I, that I, for like three or four weeks now <laughs> i mean yeah i don't think we explicitly stated in the last episode but a friend they did slip us some audition sides so yeah yes yeah, so we knew that janice was going to appear and we knew that the 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 demon was going to kind of come into play Right. Uh, now, the, the thing that's interesting about that is that the way that it was done, that's where I feel like you kind of have to bring into the consideration of seven days. Sure. Shoestring budget, mm-hmm. bottle episode. I mean, it was a bottle episode, right? You yeah. know, bottle episode, uh, the, it's made to, to save money. Uh, we know that they were working on things up until the last minute because we didn't even get the screener until the last minute, right? So... I, you know, again, it's up to each individual to decide, like, you know, do you write a pass? Do you not write a pass or whatever? That's totally fine. You know, judge it based off of your own criteria. But for me personally, it's very easy to kind of just be like, oh, yeah, that's what it was supposed to be. And I get that. But again, I think also part of that plays into like my theater background, right? You walk into a theater in a black box theater and you've got a couple of like acting cubes on the stage. And sure. over the course of the next 90 minutes, those acting cubes are meant to be an easy chair, uh, a hospital table. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Like, and, yeah. and it's just mm-hmm. sort of like, it's sort of like, yeah, use your imagination. Like, you know, it's like, I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't need you to give me everything. Right. And so mm-hmm. that's just, you know, that's just where, 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 again, where I kind of land. But um, I, the interesting thing is, is that they, I loved how they brought that back in this episode, you know, as Ben was talking about it and we got to sure. see it again, explicitly this time that it's like both times. Yes. That is Janice trying mm-hmm. to kind of come through uh, with the imaging chamber. Um, it's an interesting visual. Right. And it also plays into the conceit of the episode. So whatever um (laughs) but anyway uh, i interrupted you Uh, no that's okay it's totally fine uh i I know i do it enough too but back at the project as jen is starting to really you know dive deep into trying to track janice down and figures out of course the way to do it which is a a no-brainer right i mean it makes sense like the amount of power that she's got to be pulling to operate the imaging chamber has got to be similar to the amount of power that we're pulling just isolate everything to that night and bam you know we'll, we'll we'll find where she was sucking the power from um which she does now in the meantime something interesting that happens and this again i think ties thematically really well into what we see in uh going on in in the leap is that uh her dad is calling her uh, on the phone Mm -hmm. Uh, here's something else that's really cool here parents have been a huge element thematically subtextually plot wise of Mm -hmm. this series almost since jump street Mm -hmm. like al and janice Mm -hmm. obviously beth and janice um, you know, Ben and his mother, mm-hmm. Addison and her parents, a little bit of information we're getting. Now, Jen's dad, who apparently is, you know, a horrible con man, contacts her over a few years, you know, takes some money and run and that sort of stuff. It's, mm-hmm. you know, it's it like they're, again, they're building and these are the building blocks mm-hmm. um, and they make for good character drama as well. And now, of course, back in the leap, what do we have? We've got these three teenagers, four, again, if we're, if we're, if we're counting the actual Ben, like, who are all struggling in their own way a little bit less so Roy it feels like although certainly he's got you know some some major issues as well um Mm -hmm. but I don't think it's quite as explicit as like Stacy and Leah's and their relationship with their parents um and and so it's it's like yeah again it's like clear to me that uh that that tie um uh, of what it means to be the child of, of of a parent that uh, has failed in some way, has failed you in some way, is important to to yeah. the fabric of the show. And speaking of, yeah, even along those lines, Magic, he even kind of implies at one point with the line that he has failed his kids in a lot of ways. And it kind of yeah. makes me wonder if he maybe has an estranged relationship with with one of his kids. For anyone wondering, that was my daughter yeah. barking. Uh, oh. so- <laughs> so uh where um, are you failing as a parent uh, yeah exactly exactly now we're really on theme here yes 
Uh, no, you're right. Thank you. I'm so glad you brought that up about magic saying that because that was actually something that I wrote down um, in, in my notes um, is that, you know, he has that line. He's a father who's made a lot of mistakes. Um, you know, Jen's Jen's story was very moving to me. And again, I got to give a lot of the credit to Nenrissa on this is I just feel like she really pulled me in, um, you know, when they're on the elevator and, and she and magic are having these conversations. Now, again, it wasn't entirely successful. There were some times where it felt a little forced. It felt like the dialogue was almost just a little bit hokey, you know, like a, mm -hmm. like a, like it was it was just too, again, it was too scripted. I, I hate to say that because yeah, sure. of course it is dumbass. It's a script, but like, <laughs> but, but, yeah, but yeah. you know what I mean? And, and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and I think that like that pulled me out a little bit uh, a couple of times. Uh, but that said, I, I, I loved getting this bit of information about Jen. Um, and I do think that it dovetailed nicely with the leap story. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that there's a perfect template out there that exists for two people being trapped on an elevator on television on a not so great budget. And that is Babylon five. There's an episode of Babylon five where you have two characters. And it's a little bit different because these characters are, you know, enemies, mortal enemies where Londo and Jakar get trapped on an elevator together. Um, and throughout the course of the episode, you know, you, you're kind of going back and forth. And with a show like Babylon five, it's an ensemble show. You, you, you've got an A plot, a B plot, a C plot sometimes. And, they're able to craft in not a lot of time, these wonderful scenes between these two characters um, being trapped on the elevator. And, and, and I feel like, you know, this doesn't quite hit that mark, but it was intriguing to me and it was interesting to me. And I felt like what we learned about Jen, and again, like you pointed out, what we learned about magic uh, is important and it will be important going forward. Sure. The other thing I loved, and this you is talking about- you don't think the perfect elevator scene is when Dwight and whoever on the office gets stuck in the elevator and Dwight just immediately goes and pees in the corner, like in the first two minutes? Uh, I mean, that is, that is, that is, that is, that is, is pretty classic. <laughs> I do love Pam's yeah. line about not wanting to crawl out because she's afraid it's going to get cut in half. Yeah. Um, the, the other thing that I wanted to throw out there real quick, and this is another perfect example of kind of that economy of storytelling, is that when Jen's phone goes off, she sees dad, right? She puts her phone down and it goes to missed calls. You see in, you know, on her missed calls that she's got six two. missed calls. You see the number go up. And I just love that bit. It's like, it, it's like that tells you so much right there. Everything you need to know about you know, her dad's calling her. She's not taking his phone calls. What's going on there? You know, and, and, and again, it builds that intrigue. And then, of course, when we kind of get the information later, it's it's really nice. Um, and the fact that that her dad and magic have some sort of relationship that that the dad calls magic. Yeah. Right. And, and, and it, you know, but but there's also this wonderful. I, I wonder if part of that isn't because magic in many ways is like a surrogate father for Jen. Oh, sure. Jen clearly sees him in a paternal light. Um, mm -hmm. You know, magic basically rescued her, right? You know, and I know, mm -hmm. I, 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 maybe that's the wrong way to put that. Um, magic enabled her to use her considerable skills in a productive and positive manner. That's sure. the better way to put that. Um, I don't think Jen's the type of character that needs rescuing. Uh, you know, there's again, magic clearly has a lot of respect for her when they're on the uh, the elevator at first, and 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 you know, um, uh, he's talking about Janice, and, and Jen's just like, well, uh, it's what I what I would have done. It's like takes a shark to recognize a shark. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, I, I, I have know. I I I have a feeling that by second season, maybe even by the latter half of this first season. Janice and Jen are going to have a begrudgingly respectful working relationship. Yeah. I think you could be absolutely right. Now, it's not going to happen in this episode because they don't catch sure. Janice. Um, yeah. Because by the time Addison shows up uh, and uh, opens the hatch and, you know, and, and gets them out of the elevator and everything, mm -hmm. um, they, uh, uh, they've lost her. She's already taken the hand link and apparently whatever was essential to her imaging chamber and hit the road. Um, a couple of quick hits that I just want to throw out there before we maybe move on to the, to the next bit here. Uh, the, you, you talked about the wolves scene earlier. I really loved the wolves scene. Uh, I loved how Leah is, uh, y y you know, um, is the one that you know, has the agency to figure out what to do um, and, 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 and is able to you know, basically be responsible for rescuing them. There was, however, a moment when I thought to myself, are the wolves going to see Addison? And maybe they did. I don't know. Uh, yeah. But it made me wonder. It's like, 
I'd love to see Addison start growling. You know what I mean? Like, I'd love to see, like, I would have loved to have seen a moment, like, and it's unnecessary. It's completely unnecessary, but I would have loved to have seen a moment where maybe, like, you know, they're all, like, staring down these wolves, right? And the wolves are still coming at them. And maybe Ben would have had a moment and he was just like, Addison, start growling. You know what I mean? Like, sure. that would have been kind of humorous to me. Um, but uh, I, again, I really loved that scene uh, overall. Uh, I loved that, um, you know, again, th- that the kids are able to kind of look out for one another when Leah breaks her ankle. I love the fact that Leah basically sacrifices herself uh, at the... Um, um, at the cabin, you know, again, kind of showing that agency um, um, to get her, you know, uh, taken uh, back to to the youth academy in spite of knowing what's awaiting her. Um, I, I really enjoyed, uh, uh, you know, again, some of the humorous moments that took place uh, during the show. Um, and I, I, I just thought that... Uh, I would say, yeah, there's been a lot of great, like, little character moments that we haven't even... Uh touched on i love and for all the people like griping that no one ever catches ben talking to addison yeah. like addison basically becomes girlfriend. she becomes like an imaginary girlfriend and i love the the references like throughout and, and roy yeah. saying like well is she hot i know right because other, <laughs> otherwise what what's the point yeah you know yeah um i really I like how how they just uh embrace that and maybe it's like the fact that you know like you know ben is the you know the quote weird kid who he has Asperger's like, oh, okay. He, t- he talks to himself. Let's just, let's the just, level, let's just roll with that. The level of acceptance that these kids showed one another is mm-hmm. something to just be aspired to. Like when, oh, yeah. when, cause Leah is the first one that catches, you know, Ben talking to Addison mm-hmm. and he's like, you know, do you have an imaginary girlfriend? He's like, fiance. He's like, I mean, girlfriend, girlfriend. And uh, yes. yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, right. Right. And then, you know, Leah's like, you know, do you ever have a, a real girlfriend? He's like, yes and yeah. uh and leah's like so did i and yeah. it was really nice and i because it was just like love... one or two yeah there was just like one or two times they touched on the fact that leah was either gay or bi yeah, yeah yeah and i and i just love again i just love the level of acceptance that ben shows her that everyone else you know shows her um it, yeah again it's it, it was just really really nice and really comforting and of course there are times of tension there are times of you know discord amongst the group but overall um there is this wonderful level of, of acceptance for them and when you get to the end again even though maybe i feel like it's a little too neat maybe it felt a little too like oh, okay fine friends forever um you know they're gonna break into song now uh <laughs> but we, we, we got we got the really enjoyed we, that yes we got the big quantum leap ending mm-hmm. where we got the big happy ending where it's not just like they go on and have happy lives they are friends for life they still get together go on um, vacations together they go on vacations together and to me it's like i would be annoyed about it but that that's just a quantum leap tradition to go right back. you know they the only way they could have gone bigger was if roy and stacy got married and had four kids right now, here's something else that's interesting about this episode, and it was pointed out to me, and I hadn't thought about it before. Normally, in the history of Quantum Leap, Sam or Ben is there to change or affect one person, mm-hmm. right? Now, it might be, it might have a spiral effect, right? Like, I'm here to sure. rescue this person so that this person stays safe or whatever. Another element of this episode that is that is a potential challenge for you know everyone involved in the creation of this episode is that Ben has to affect and change the lives of three different people. Mm -hmm. We have to connect and be invested in these three different characters, right? Mm -hmm. And while, again, I feel like the Leah and Roy stuff is incredibly successful and I really enjoyed it, the Stacey stuff isn't quite there. At the same time, it's hard for me by the end of the episode to say like, I mean, it was mission accomplished, right? Like it, it, it felt like, everything that that we that brought us to this point mm. um it it did work even if it wasn't necessarily always 100 successful um and i think that 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 to me is 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 commendable under the circumstances you know you're dealing with less time because you're also splitting stuff with the project you're mm. you're you're having to kind of split your focus among these three other characters instead of just focusing on the one character again like in somebody up there you know like spin you're dealing with one character you get to have that level of investment between you know, these two brothers that we don't necessarily get to have built in because of the extra time we're able to spend with these other three characters. And so, again, I feel like with you know, what was accomplished, given that, you know, those kind of boundaries um, mm-hmm. felt successful to me. Um, sure.
I lost. My, I had a, I had a thought. And then, <laughs> tired, tired dad moment. Tired well, I hope it comes moment. back. But before yeah. that, I'll, I'll mm-hmm. throw us. I'll throw us right towards the end here. Now, here's another really cool twist, right? The mm-hmm. the you know uh, Sullivan and um, Ringer right. show up and Rock City and Bebop. Yeah. <laughs> nice. They take Leah back because Leah goes out and and, and sacrifices herself. Tell, makes up the story about how that, this, I was slowing them down. This is the point that like I five wanted. hours ago. This is the point that I wanted to make. In another version of the scene, and I feel like this is something that Sam Beckett may have done. Like Sam Beckett may have full heartedly had rushed out to save Leah in that moment. Whereas in this moment, Roy is the one who wants to do that. And Ben is like, 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 no, then her sacrifice means nothing. There has to be a better way to do it. Right. That's the thought. Also, I thought it was, um, I, I'm always surprised, and maybe it's just because I don't watch enough network television, when when I see network TV like go the route of like when when it's uh, Ringer, I think it's Ringer, actually like physically tortures her to see whether or not the ankle the ankle break is fake. Oh, yeah. I, I was like, oh, like I'm I'm not used to seeing that my network television, but then Blacklist has been on the air for like ten years, so I should, <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, that yeah, and, and the the level of abuse that is clearly leveled at these kids, um, mm-hmm. it, you know, obviously it's reprehensible, but uh, the um. And, and I was almost this, unprepared for it. And we, of course, we yeah. learned about the box earlier from Roy. Roy's been sure. in the box. Roy's got painkillers with him. Roy's mm-hmm. been addicted to these painkillers. Roy talks about the fact that he can't sleep because of the painkillers, which is like, ah, isn't that, you know, weird and mm-hmm. twisted. Roy makes the sacrifice of giving his painkillers to Leah after she breaks her ankle, which is a right. wonderful moment for him. Again, I really enjoyed Roy's character throughout the course of this episode. It really, really did. I mean, I, I, I think Leah, maybe, you know, if, if, if it's a competition, which is not like maybe I, I I attached to Leah just a little bit more, but man, there was some really wonderful stuff with Roy and, and, and I enjoyed that, you know, that evolution, that arc mm. um, throughout the course of the episode, even if maybe it felt a little too clean, but again, yeah, I you don't got understand. 40 minutes. I don't know. understand the Stacy hate. Stacy worked perfectly fine for me. I think Stacy brought in like, like the musical aspect of the show. Like she's the one who, who mentions wannabe yeah. later on. I feel like, I don't know why it's just now occurring to me as I think about it. Like Stacy's the one who picked out the music. At the cabin, yeah. which, by the way, is a wonderful selection of yeah. of '90s music. That is, with the exception of "Woohoo," which you can kind of fudge right. because they never established they were actually never actually listened to that song. Uh, song two, right? By Blur. It was released in '97. The episode takes place in '96. I checked. I double checked everything else. Everything else was musically accurate. Right. Anything that's down, diegetic. Down. Yeah. Down to Stacy's line of the wannabe song. It hasn't been released in the states yet. Yeah, because it had just been out for a week in 1996 when this episode took place, but that song wasn't released into the U.S. until January 1997. I will never be able to think of that song again without comparing it to Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I never put those two in the same category. It's but... not, it, you know, right? It's not Stacy Hate. It's not. It, it's just for some reason I think something about um, maybe because I felt like the Roy and Leah stuff was so well done that there just felt like there was maybe a little piece missing for Stacy. And 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 even as I was talking about it earlier, there were a couple of things that occurred to me that I hadn't beforehand, and so maybe I, I I was wrong or missing the mark. But like it just, yeah, it's just my overall impression, and there's a reason why I can't articulate it. You know, perhaps okay. because maybe it's maybe it's not valid. But um, yeah, it just it didn't it didn't work quite as well uh, as the other two did for me. Um, yeah. Now, of course, they all make the decision to go back. The cool thing is, is that Leah, of course, has mentioned her her cool uncle a number of times and her cool uncle's mm-hmm. on TV. And we find out at the cabin that not only is her cool uncle on TV, but he's on the news. And, you know, the kids, uh, mm-hmm. I, I think it's Stacy. Stacy's like, you know, I know someone can help us. And of course, sure. they, they get the uncle to come out with his news van. They catch Sullivan and Ringer getting to throw, uh, getting ready to throw Leah into the box. Uh-huh. Um, and immediately, you know, what's going on here? And and, and it provides mm-hmm. a nice resolution. And, and and when I say that things are tied up too neat, that's not, I don't mean this. I actually think that this works really, really well. Um, it, maybe it's a little deus ex machina, but I think that it's, it's set you, up well enough that it works it really well for me. It's dynamite down the manhole. Okay. I don't get that reference. From the pilot. From the premiere episode. I do get that reference. <laughs> take it, take it. From now on, anytime they use this device where things wrap up a little bit too neatly, neatly I'm going to call it dynamite down the manhole. All right. 
sounds dirty. Um, so, <laughs> so, so, uh, yes, I, I, and then of course we get kind of the closing scene with everybody here. Um, you mentioned something earlier about how everybody looked too pretty. One, one thing that I've uh, neglected to say too, is like, they come out of that car accident really well. <laughs> and that's another, I mean, you know, I know freak accidents happen and, sure. and that happens. The oh, fact yeah. that, the fact that four of them come out of it really well sure right it, it kind of stretches credibility but hey this is this is a time travel show so exactly know. like that's mm-hmm. the other thing too is it's like whatever happened to your suspension of disbelief like just enjoy the story right you know it's like sure. if it's really a piece of garbage like fine you know we'll 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 let you know that that's how we feel too but like i think that there are certain things that yeah it, you get if you get hung up on it's like how do you enjoy anything in life sure. <laughs> now, so, now what i will say, yeah now we'll say like one one issue i did have in this episode and it was like i was taken out of the moment and It'll be interesting to see because I can only assume that in the second half of the season, the Leaper X story, which by the way, I love the fact that we have a name for Leaper X. His name is Richard Martinez. Yeah. But the power of Ian is so strong, we are still calling them Leaper X. Uh, power of that... Ian in Mason Alexander Park, mind you, is so strong that they mm-hmm. have inspired a ton of emeogencies sure. yeah. uh, related memes uh uh i mean it's it's amazing somebody created a framed like sure. mm-hmm. picture of cat ears and it's like you know break in case of emergencies and i'm just like yeah. i love that this is that that this is the world that we're living in you know mm-hmm. <laughs> where that, that is yeah. possible <laughs> yeah so i think it's like as the second season goes on i can only imagine that the story with leaper x and janice is going to intensify and I was taken out of the moment of this episode at the beginning where like right at the beginning, like right after this car wreck, <laughs> Ben and Addison have to go off and have a conversation about the last leap sure. and how it, and how it relates to Janice. And I was really pulled out of the moment with this episode when like, Hey, friends for life, we're going to go in, we're going to do the, you know, the break, like, you know, the huddle thing. And then Ben has a memory flash and then he steps away from the group to tell Addison what he remembers that kind of took me out of it too. And it's going to be interesting to see like how they navigate that because I feel like as the season goes on, we are going to have these kind of rev relations at the at the end of every episode. And I felt it kind of short shrifted the leap story a little bit. Interesting. Um, um we talked oh sorry go ahead. no that that's about it. We talked about this earlier. I did not feel that way at all. Mm. Um I and they've done like it, the... yeah, and they've done it before, like successfully, like the end of uh, Salvation or Bust. Ben and mm-hmm. Addison go off to have their little moment. That's when we reveal the Rex. Decent proposal. Decent proposal. They found a, a great way to get Justin Hartley's character out of it, so Ben and Addison could have that conversation. This time, it was it was the hey, friends for life, friends for life, flash memory. Would you excuse me? Mm. And then steps away. Just kind uh, of, yeah. yeah. It, I don't know. It worked. It worked for me. Um, and, and, and then of course the information that, that he relays, uh, mm-hmm. I, I, I think it's, it's going to be interesting because I can see how, um, I think there are going to be a lot of different opinions on this moment. Um, and I think that, that the, that the fandom might be divided and I don't mean divided, like, you know, 50, 50, you know, I literally think that it's just going to, there, there's going to be some people that, you know, are, are, are just, yes okay what's next there'll be some people that are kind of like eh, okay you know and then there'll be some people that maybe just don't like it at all um but i the, didn't the, yeah so the nothing. reveal being that i can't remember how exactly he put it but he leaped to save addison yeah to say i i leaped to save you yeah um so i ha- i mean i have i have a lot a lot to say about this but i'll try to be succinct so interesting behind the scenes tidbit that, that we learned is that uh, apparently this was not the original ending that originally it was done in such a way that the ending would be Ben saying, I know why I leapt. And that's how it would have ended. Yeah. Um, that one of the things that apparently happened is that like Raymond 
he, you know, wasn't sure that the scene was working or, you know, he didn't feel like he had nailed it or whatever. And, and then there were conversations that took place and, you know, everybody was just sort of like, well, we can't do this. Like, uh, we, 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 we got to give him the whole thing. Right. Um, and, 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 and furthermore out of all of this, like just learning apparently like how incredible like Raymond and Caitlin are and how, um, you, you know, they're just, the, they're just fantastic with, with, with their, with their input and, 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 and with, you know, their understanding and, and, and all of that sort of stuff. And so to have a moment where, you know, where, where Raymond kind of like expressed a concern, it was very easy, um, for them to kind of say like, okay, well, let's kind of figure this out. And, uh, and that resulted in a reshoot, which gave you know, gave us the, the, the line that, uh, you know, I left because of you. Um, and I think that the thing I love about it and the thing that I've said before in reference to other revelations and other moments that we've seen thus far, and still some stuff that's wide open, including Leaper X, for instance, are the possibilities. We still don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. We don't know, you know, we don't know when he's going. I think, you know, the perfect circle bit is going to be incredibly important. And I almost wonder if it's going to tie back into the string theory. Uh, Cause he, he mentions when he sees the, mm -hmm. the perfect circle of the intake sure. drain, he has the memory of him drawing a circle uh, yeah. on the, on, on the whiteboard when, you know, he's talking to, to Janice and, and kind of figuring things out. Um, it's clear that there was like, that this was a deliberate thing and that Ben was the one in charge here, right? Like for the longest time, we've thought that Janice was the one that was trying to like orchestrate all this and, and kind of like the, you know, pull in all the strings. And it's clear from, from the moments that we see in this episode that that's not the case unless Ben's misremembering, which is another possibility, right? Yeah. But from what we see on screen, it seems to be very clear that Ben is the one that said, we have to do this. And that Janice's job was kind of to, to to say like, okay, this is, this is the time yeah. we got to go now, you know, and she's been the one kind of leading the charge in the, in the present, uh, yeah. in some, in some I mean, fashion. They, they even made a point, like, and they did this twice in this episode in the flashback. When Janice says, are you sure you want to do this? Janice punches the you. Yeah. And I felt like, 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 like the writers and the directors, like they want to make sure that we know that, that this is Ben's somebody else could have left. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the other thing that I got from it too. I got the idea, the vibe that somebody else could have been the leaper. How do you mean? Are you sure you want to do this? Oh, okay. And not somebody else, not me. Oh, maybe sure. Leaper I got you. X. Maybe, mm -hmm. you know, maybe there's other people that they could have chosen to, to take that leap. Uh, I mm -hmm. Again, that's the thing that I love about what they've been able to do. I feel like there are a lot of shows out there, a lot of genre shows specifically, shows that deal with mythology that frequently paint themselves into a corner, paint themselves into a box where there's generally only one way out. And then they try to subvert that expectation expectation and it falls flat because they've been following this you know this kind of straight line and all of a sudden they decide to get all curly at the end and i think we've seen it with shows like lost i think we saw it with shows like alias i think we've seen it with doctor who it's happened you know a number of times i feel like there are a number of other sci-fi genre shows where they do they just kind of paint themselves into a corner and 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 instead of kind of just you know leaving themselves open with possibilities or maybe sometimes just following occam's razor and saying like hey Maybe this is the most obvious thing, but there's a damn good reason for it. And I genuinely feel at the, this point, I have I have faith. I know that there are other people that don't, but I have faith and I'm invested enough that I really want to see what they've got in store because I think that, mm -hmm. that 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 again, it's open to a lot of possibility. It's open to a lot of interpretation. And I think that it can it can stoke some really great conversations. And I hope that it will uh, coming out of this, you know, give us the opportunity to kind of think, okay, where do they go from here? You know, what what mm -hmm. what happens next? Um so yeah. I, I I don't know. I, I I liked it. I do think that they're, again, going back to that underwhelming thing. I think that maybe expectations were kind of screwing with me a little bit. You, you know, the, the, the I, idea. I mean, like, like I said, <sighs> like, like the, 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 the last two episodes, I'm like, while I had my issues with the earthquake episode, like overall, I loved like the final, like what they created out of the situation. Yes. And I love the Halloween episode. And it occurred to me, like, as the series goes on, like, you know, there are going to be ups, there's going to be downs, there's going to be fluff episodes. Totally. You know, there's, there's going to be, you know, there's going to be the portraits for Troyan right after, although I, I love that episode. And, you know, there's going to be the fluff episodes after the big episodes. And so just like manage, manage expectations as yeah. we go. And we've I, said before, like, as far as like where they're going with this, I think we've said this before, because some folks have asked this online. I think the writers have given themselves several outs. 
um, exactly several different avenues. I think they have one. If they are able to pull Scott Bakula back in for some reason, they will have it involving Sam in some way. If not, you know, they they have other avenues to go. My only thing that I want is that when uh, in the first episode and the video message that Ben leaves Addison, he said that this is bigger than you and me. Like you can't imagine. Like I want it to be big. Like I want it to be, if not there, like I want it to be on the verge of like stopping a time unwinding paradox. You know right, what I mean? Right, right. You know what I mean? I want it to be- I mean, big. again, I I, there's there's something about the image of the circle that, that again mm-hmm. feels important to me. And uh, I, I really wonder- you know what that's going to end up meaning and and i and i think yeah I, I, it, they because they've not yet really leaned into some of the timey wimey stuff you know they talked about it a little bit with 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 the leaper x stuff you know leaper x from the past the present the future you know where 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 is he leaping from um i think or when is he leaping from rather i think that uh again they've left themselves open to being able to explore that Mm-hmm. I think that there are going to be a lot of really cool ways to explore things. I think that, you know, again, we've we've been made privy to a couple of uh, audition sides that it's clear to me uh, that they are going to be able to play with things. I, and that's another thing that's important. It's like, this show's eight episodes in, you know, these people mm-hmm. are still finding their footing. These people are still kind of like figuring out exactly what works and what doesn't work. And, uh, and, and, and I think that the wonderful thing is, is that we have seen some incredible episodes. We've seen some incredible moments for the actors, some incredible moments for the guest cast. Um, we've seen, you know, some really fun stuff. We've seen some stuff that doesn't work quite as well. And, 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 and I think as they continue to dial that in, uh, I, I just think that the back half of the season is going to be really, really wonderful. Um, mm-hmm. and, uh, I, you know, I, I, I think who knows what'll happen, but I mean, I, I just don't think this is going to be a one and done. I, I, I don't think that this is going to be the only season and that, and that has me very excited because I think that there's mm-hmm. a lot of incredible possibilities to come. Sure. You want to hear my crazy Leaper X theory, my hair. No, I do. I have no proof of this. Here's my theory. We are going to find out that when Jen and magic went to his house a few episodes ago, yeah. he had already been time traveling. He had already been leaping that whole, that whole nice guy. Bit, oh, yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. Good soldier bit. That was a total play. And that later on, we are going to get a flashback to right after Jen and Magic leave the house. He's going to totally flip a character and he's going to call his superior. And we're going to find out that that moment for him comes after the time he confronted Ben in the bar in Salvation. That's my wild theory. Because it's the obvious thing if he really did start leaping into the future. It's a twist. Yeah. It's a twist if it turns out he's already been time traveling. Yeah. I think the wonderful thing, too, about a show that sometimes leans into maybe some of the more obvious stuff, because I think a lot of people were pretty sure that, like, oh, Ben leapt to save Addison, right? Like, that's got to mm-hmm. be what he's doing, right? I think that the wonderful thing about leaning into that sort of stuff is it really gives you the opportunity to subvert a lot of those expectations and twist things in really wonderful ways. And I think what you just said, it makes what you just said even more possible, right? Because it's like, if we lean into this, if we lean into what everybody's thinking is going to happen, when we do twist stuff it's gonna you know it's really gonna pop the crowd if you will you know what i mean like it's really gonna mm-hmm. gonna hit gonna gonna hit and i and and so th- that's the other thing that's, that's excited you know has me intrigued is it's just sort of like oh when's when's the next jump scare coming you know what i mean that sort of thing mm-hmm. um so here's a question for you uh, i i'm i'm very interested because uh, i kind of already know the answer to this but um how do you think addison is going to take all this i don't know I, I, I'll keep my, I'll keep I mean, my lips yeah, I mean, sealed. <laughs> I mean, we, we have some hints from different, like, I, I, like, I don't know. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just interested to see. Yeah. Uh, the, the only thing I will say in response to that is almost any time I post a video or any, it, it, this tends to happen more on TikTok than anywhere else or where someone says like, they, they don't like Caitlin Bassett. They don't think she's a very good actor. I will accept none of your Caitlin Bassett slander. No. <sighs> I think she's fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. There you go. Coined yeah, a new word. Yeah, new word. <laughs> Put I that think on a t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Uh, I think she's fantastic in the role and wherever we go in the second half of the season with Addison. Yeah. I'm for it. Um, It'll be interesting to see, especially if we get beyond one season, at what point Addison is going to start leaping. Right. 
and who else might go into that imaging chamber. I know people are clamoring for Ian sure. to get into the imaging chamber at some point, um, yeah. which I, you know, I, of course, I would love that. You know, I think that's great. But I'm with you too. It's like no, I, I won't abide any Caitlin bashing. Uh, I want to. I don't want to abide any of the the actor bashing. I mean, that, that's the other mm-hmm. thing too. Is it's like. There's there's such a level, and I know that a lot of the people that that do these things that make these criticisms or that troll or whatever don't really care about any of this sort of stuff. But it's so disrespectful of the the work, the time, the effort that goes into you know to doing this. I mean, it's such a commitment. There's such a a high level of commitment that goes into a project like this. Mm-hmm. And you know, when you're working on a television show like this, especially if you're in Raymond's shoes or Caitlin's shoes, especially, I feel like you know you are working your ass off, mm-hmm. and 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 uh, with everything that we have heard. Um, including stuff that we've heard from people very, very close to the day-to-day production of these episodes. They are both just phenomenal human beings on top of it all. And, 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 mm-hmm. and, you know, so they're working hard, they're good people. Um, and, and, and I mean, they're great. I mean, again, I think Raymond is just, there have been mm-hmm. moments throughout the course of the past eight episodes where I'm just sort of like, give that man every award you can, you know, mm-hmm. like for whatever, you know, stock you might give awards or not. But like, yeah, it's just there's just some really great, great work that's happening on this show. And I think that, again, that like Mason and and, and Rissa and, and, and Ernie are all, you know, right, right there with it as well. Um we got some interesting tidbits from Twitter this past week, uh, including some footage of the USS Iowa, uh, which is the mm-hmm. port of Los Angeles, um, and how uh, you know they're going to use that location is up to anybody's guess. Um, but I think that it's it's kind of cool. Uh, the, the USS Iowa, of course, is a battleship that was commissioned in 1943. Uh, it's been out of active service for a number of years. It was actually put out of active service in 1958, but brought into active service in the 80s during the Soviet buildup. Um, um, just to kind of like, you know, have an extra ship on the board, I guess. Uh, uh, and, and now it's been kind of, a um, you know, almost a museum ship, and it will actually become the site of an official um, uh, museum, I believe, opening next year. Um, so it was kind of interesting to see that. Um, and again, to see, you know, what they might do with that, how they might use that, especially knowing the military connections of some of our characters, uh, you sure. know, Magic, obviously being a former, former Navy SEAL, uh, Al, of course, being a former Admiral. Um, real quick, just split off of that. I, I don't see it as much on Twitter, but I've seen it quite a few times on Reddit and Discord and a little bit on Facebook. I just, anything is possible. And I'm mm-hmm. sure if it's chosen to be done, that it will be done in a respectful manner. But I really don't think that there's, we're not going to see a CGI, Al, okay? Like, there's been some I, comments about that. Like, I don't I think don't... that that's just, that's, I don't think that's anywhere in the plans. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. I don't I don't want to see it. I'm sure no, there, I, there, there there are tasteful ways that you can make suggestions of 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 things that Al said or did. Absolutely. After the fact. Yeah. I don't even know if I want to see like a weird camera angle body double kind of thing. No, but I will say that we do have the precedent. And I, and again, I don't think that this is going to happen at all, but we do have the precedent of another actor being cast in that role. You know, James Walters played Al in Elite for Lisa. Oh, sure. Young Al. So, I mean, the thing is, is it's like, you know, I would not look at that as some sort of sacrilege. I don't think that that's going to happen. But again, it's we 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 have seen that, you know, in the past. So mm-hmm. uh, we'll see. And let's face it. I mean, so many genre shows these days. I mean, look at everything that Star Trek has done. Like we've seen what have we seen now? Three different actors play Captain Pike. Uh, I, I guess actually technically four. Um, you know, we've we, we've got a new Captain Kirk now on Strange New Worlds. We've got you know we've seen like three or four actors play um, you know Spock. Like I mean, again, I don't think that that is the the, the direction that Quantum Leap is headed at all. I don't think it's necessary. I don't think I'm just saying that yeah. like you know. I, but yeah, I just sometimes when I see people say that you know that that, that maybe we'll get a CGI Al or whatever, I'm just really like I. No, and, uh, I don't think that that's in the cards. Yeah, uh, anyway. I do think I do think what we're gonna get in the latter half of the season, and this is just from like some audition sides that we got. Like, um, if you've been waiting for Quantum Leap to get a little bit more, like you said earlier, like overt in their storytelling and talking about social justice issues, like I think we're gonna get that. Like, obviously, like the, they they know they're currently now like seeking a, a transgender actor for to play Justice in. Um, in an upcoming episode that'll come in after the break. So I think they're going to start taking some more chances with that. And we're going to come up like closer to 
to current present day yes those episodes and i am i am really excited to see those i'm really excited to uh for those conversations here I agree. And I just want to, uh, a member of the writing room, Shakina, um, has, has posted a few things on, uh, on Twitter recently. Um, and I, I just, I just love what, uh, what they've said. Um, creating roles for young trans actors makes me cry, you know, uh, mm. emojis here. I stopped acting mm. when I was a teenager and thought there would never be a place for me. Now I'm watching self tapes of trans kids auditioning for quantum leap with scenes I wrote while their parents read with them off camera. Hundreds of trans kids have stepped up to audition for Quantum Leap. They um, they tell us they feel seen and validated just to have the opportunity, but not all trans kids want to be actors. Fam, what are you doing in your field to welcome trans kids to let them know they have a future? Which I think is an incredible question, obviously incredibly valid. And I, I think that, yeah, uh, we, we know obviously with the auditioning of this role um, that that's something that is going to be addressed on the show. And uh, I, yeah, I'm... I'm you know, just going back to some of the things I said uh, last week, I just want to continue to celebrate that. I want to continue to, mm-hmm. you know, uh, raise the, the the level of awareness on that and, and and just to continue to applaud, you know, any type of work that, that can be done um, to do that, to make, you know, human beings, you know, in this case, specifically trans kids feel validated. Um, mm-hmm. It's noble and beautiful and wonderful and i just want to celebrate it and i I want it to be commonplace yeah i agree and the the only thing i would add to that is that um you know for those who have been critical of the show in these first few episodes as as it's find its footing like if you're if we're quabbling over how much time is spent between leap story and project story and whether or not you like the procedural or not, like also like keep in mind, like they're 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 trying to do bigger things with this, yeah. Uh, as far as equity and inclusion and just kind of keep that in mind. Yeah. So yeah. 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 Trying. I'm looking through our YouTube comments. Uh, you you covered Nick's email earlier, which was uh, which was awesome. Thank you again, Nick here uh, i appreciate the kindness the kindness mm-hmm. extended is just really yeah it's a, it's a generosity and i and i appreciate that yeah uh adrian saw watching us for the first time on youtube usually there's apple podcast why do you torture Sorry. yourself adrian <laughs> why why do you i always get a little self-conscious when people like post things on twitter and like like they got us like on their big screen tv I know. And I'm like, I'm like you know, why why would you why would you torture yourself like that yeah and yeah, no, yeah, some other just like little comments, like what their thoughts on the episode or Halloween episode last week. But yeah, we appreciate you uh, watching or listening to us in whatever way and whatever you, whatever you like. Yeah, thank you for finding us. Thank you for being here. Um, thank you for, for joining, engaging, conversing with us. Um, mm-hmm. Something that was said to me recently, and I really loved this, and I think it, it, it hits on a lot of key things that I've been enjoying about some of the conversations that you know we've been able to see and take part in on Twitter is that uh, a lot of times, you know, when when art presents itself to us, um, you know, I use the word engage a lot, but it's a conversation. It's mm-hmm. a conversation between us and the piece of art, and 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 I hope that we can always endeavor to to, to have that conversation. You know, not only you know uh, uh, with one another, but but with literally with the television show itself, um, and mm-hmm. engage with it on on that level. And I've seen again, I've seen some really lovely conversations happening, you know, on Twitter about that and speaking about, um, you know. The, the the show in the present in the here in the now you know through 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 this lens um and and being able to just um understand i think what it is um and what it can be while yeah. also you know making sure to point out those times when something might feel a little off or you know maybe mm. it was a little underwhelming or you know oh this didn't work for me or that didn't work for me because that's completely valid and that should you know and that should be a part of the dialogue too that's part of the conversation that we you know can have with one another as well so um yeah and i think that another thing about this episode that was said and and it's absolutely true is there there i do not believe that there is any other show on television right now this is certainly not network television that could do what quantum leap did in the past two weeks to present an episode like, Oh, of little faith and then do an episode like stand by Ben. Mm-hmm. And I, I, you know, you just don't get that. And I think that leaning mm-hmm. into that kind of storytelling and that, that ability to, to function in a way as an anthology series, as well as having these procedural elements and this larger mythology and arc happening behind it, uh, is really 
could be the part of the genius of this iteration of, of Quantum Leap um, because it's able to touch on things that other shows just don't. And I'm not talking about the subject matter. I'm just talking about the ability to switch gears in that yeah. way while also maintaining this consistent sort of mytholo- you know, mythology and arc behind sure. you know all of that, supporting all of that. So I look forward to seeing the show continue to grow and I look sure. forward to being able to talk about whatever we're going to talk about the next few weeks while it's not, yeah. you know, airing uh, new episodes. For sure. Yeah. A, a couple of notes on that, as far as like thematically shifting gears and what Quantum Leap is able to do. One thing we didn't mention is that we do not see where Ben leaps at the end of this episode. That's right. He leaps out and at, and that is, uh, and that is it. And fade to black again. Yeah. Fade to black. Yeah. And one of my criticisms of the OG series is that they were so stringently held to that idea. Like we always have to show where Sam is going right. next is sometimes you got just some very tonally bad transitions right. that in hindsight are just so like I, the, the end of black on white on fire, Ooh. he leaps out of the most tragic situation, probably the most tragic ending of any quantum leap episode mm-hmm. into the middle of a bad magician's set and revealing himself going from beat up and bloody holding his dead brother to literally Spoilers. just able to like bust out a cardboard yeah and just be sitting awkwardly in front of an audience just horribly just yeah just bad metaphor bad whatever <laughs> i feel like if I, if anybody were to was like sit down and watch that episode as a sample of quantum leap i would feel beholden to go listen if you've never <laughs> seen quantum leap before I got to tell you that they were so stringent with this like format of like showing you where he leaps next, no matter what, how tonally different it is. Please don't hold that against this episode because it wasn't trying to make some kind of comment. Um, Yeah. Yeah. It feels like the leap outs are a little bit more thoughtful in that, in that manner, you know, in the original series, they could be edited and changed for whatever rerun they were doing or for syndication or whatever. And I feel like in this manner that like, yeah, there, there is a a little bit, you know, maybe uh, it's a little bit more thoughtful uh, in some fashions. And the fact that we've had two leaps to black now, you know, salvation or bust and now stand by Ben um, is, you know, it's like, okay, you know, it's like, they're, they're, they're not always going to have to show us what's next. Um, And I think that that's smart. Um, the other thing too, uh, black and white of fire. Did, did, did you know, did we know, did we talk about this before that it was originally, uh, that Deborah had written it as, as a play. I felt like I may have known that, but I know yeah. more. I didn't, I, I just, it just popped into my head as you were, as you mentioned the episode, which of course I love. It's one of my favorite episodes of the original yeah. series, but, um, yeah, yeah. I found that I, I, maybe I did know it. Maybe I didn't know. Well, it. I mean, which makes sense because we, we, we've talked about it before. Like, I think one of the reasons we'll, what sets that episode apart is the fact that you could almost take Sam and Al out of that story. Right. It, it could just be its own standalone story. And like what Sam does in that episode, the leapy Ray, if I'm remembering correctly, like mm-hmm. Ray could have done those same things. Right. Right. So yeah, I had another thought after the, the whole anthology thing, but I can't remember what it is. That's all right. We should get out of here. We should get out. Of- oh, here's the thing that I was talking about. Uh, as, as far as like anthology and transitions go, we should uh, kind of give our, our listeners an idea of like what we're going to be doing over this eight week break. Yeah. So we don't know. Uh, no, um, <laughs> <laughs> we we will we will keep going. We're not we're, we're mm. we, you know, uh, we're, we're going to keep producing episodes. They, they may be shorter, which may be good news for you. Uh, mm. I don't think the plan as of right now is to do any revisited episodes. We're not going to go and revisit the classic series. We'll the OG, I think that would, yeah. that would be weird. Uh, right. I think we're, we're probably going to do at least one kind of like recapping the first eight episodes. What you know, like recapping like what we've learned so far. right yes uh, and, and i will say along that line if there's any uh i'll put that there if there's any question like you want us to to address or any topic you want to address as far as like these first episode eight episodes uh hit us up on on, on twitter on our socials uh more easily hit us up at our email fateswidewheelpodcast at gmail.com you can send us a letter or record an mp3 and attach it as a sound file and that'll kind of give us some some content ideas of like what like questions or like things they want addressed because i'm sure like we'll do it like at least one recap and maybe just like some uh critically revisiting some episodes after we've had a time to to sit with them 
Yeah. We'd love to, we'd love to have the opportunity to do another, we haven't done this in a while, but we'd love to have an opportunity to do like some listener mail basically. So yeah, feel yeah. free to send us your questions, your thoughts, uh, your considerations about stuff. And we'll, and we'll certainly uh, try to put something together for that. Uh, we certainly plan on having some guests, um, not necessarily guests that are, you know, working on the show or anything like that, sure. but uh, certainly some, bring, some bring guest in. hosts. Yes. Um, uh, get yeah. back to the, what we used to do with the uh, with the earlier days yeah. of our podcast maybe maybe we'll uh, i don't know maybe we won't maybe we, maybe we'll do like our we'll rank we'll rank the eight episodes thus far see see where maybe we we'll, land on that it's fun we'll, to do that sometimes maybe we'll do that i know uh a few years ago he was technologically challenged but chris stewart who was our guestiest guest oh yeah back in the old days of the pod he is a huge horror movie fan he runs like a horror movie fan group that he revives every year around halloween i would love to get him back on and uh with for do a revisit of OE of little faith yeah and see what does but i know uh him and nicole are getting ready to to, to have a kid that's right and twins twins oh i wins i missed that yeah. um and also yeah like i said like he was not too savvy as far as like dialing in or whatever because this is back in the old days when we just did our podcasts right i mean after the pandemic now everybody knows how to use zoom so <laughs> i hope so <laughs> Right. anyway so that's yeah so that's what you should be uh looking forward to over the next yeah, eight weeks to... eight ten weeks whatever after the start right. of the new year yeah and if it and if it's earlier than that i mean like i said we'll let you know and we'll be ready to to go um but in the meantime yeah we've reached the the mid-season finale uh stand by ben uh again overall good not great definitely not bad loved some stuff about it um other stuff didn't quite work as well for me um but uh, uh yeah i just that for some reason there's i think maybe there's a little bit of a personal connection just with the character as well which is probably one of the things that could be incredibly successful about this episode but roy really spoke to me and i think that maybe you know i just want to add this last note about the show the wonderful thing about this episode is i didn't take the time to step back and view it through the lens of a 16 year old and thinking about like you know when you and i were kids watching quantum leap and how that show affected us and how we connected with it can you imagine what an episode like this would do if you're 16 years old and you're dealing with any sort of trauma whatsoever you know and able to connect with these characters whether it's self-harm like leah whether it's some sort of addiction like roy whether it's um uh, uh um any of that yeah yeah, you know, a, a, a parent, mm. you know, deceased parent like Stacy, um, you know, uh, sure. dealing with some sort of, you know, you know, issues. Uh, um, yeah, I just think that uh, it's an incredible opportunity for that. And and speaking again about, you, you know, the idea that having the impact to make people feel validated, make people feel seen and acknowledged, again, seems to be uh, another thematic element that we've seen touched on a number of times already throughout the course of the series, and clearly is important to this episode. And I think will clearly be very important to uh, our episode where they put out the casting call for a transgendered youth so um character of justice sure. so I, I i think that that's incredibly important a very important uh powerful statement to mm -hmm. make and 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 i do think that, that again that there's some really subtle wonderful ways that this episode touches on that and and i love that through line of ben okay. acknowledging these kids and doing it in a way where he's on their level as opposed to trying to do it from some from you know position that. of authority yeah 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 as betsy and i were wrapping up our viewing last night we were talking about that and the fact that right now there is this uh nostalgia for the 90s like even teenagers are like this i have this like nostalgia for the 90s right now so it'd be interesting everything that you said but also looking at a story that takes place in a time right now we're like we're revisiting as a culture right in the 90s like what they think of uh, 26 years mm-hmm that's how long it's been since 1996, Dennis. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. <laughs> it, was, it was the summer between my junior and senior year. Yep. I remember. Yeah. Um, so along the I I don't I don't know or on, on the TikTok or whatever, I want to find teenagers who are watching and talking about this show. Absolutely. That's my that's my that's my next thing I want to find out. Yeah. I would love. I, I, I would love to hear some young voices talking about the show. I want to hear them talk about it. Like I don't want. To, they don't want to talk. About it. I'm like an old man. I'm like 43 well, years I mean, old. Yeah, I, I'd love to hear. You know, not two white dudes in their 40s talking about the show. <laughs> you know, right? <laughs> uh, so I'm just kind of. I like I said. I'm interested in hearing their opinions. Like to not like like share ours with them. I just like. Well, hey, where are they, are they talking about the show? Yeah. Or not? I don't know. Right. Anyway, 
on that note, we're doing the Midwest goodbye here. We should. Yeah, I know. Right? Let's get the hell <laughs> yeah. out of here. Thank yeah. you all so very much. Uh, we really appreciate it. Take care of yourselves. Take care of one another. Stay safe out there. And remember to always, unlike Ben Song, leap responsibly. All right. Take care, everyone.